so the benefits of the, the media technology fair today. I, someone said um, something, it was very simple, but I think it was quite, quite important. Someone, someone said that the last time that we had this conversation, a conversation like this, is the last time that CDAC got people together. So I think the benefit of it is it is really very, two things, it is important, it's an important issue, um, from all sorts of, because there's great potential, huge pitfalls, and as quite a lot of people said, you know, it's happening anyway, so it's not something that one can avoid. Um, and the, the parallels that were made with other industries and the way that technology has affected other industries for good and for, for bad. Um, so the benefits were, it's something that has to be talked about and it's not really being talked about anywhere else. Bringing people together from very different perspectives but kind of getting to a point where some of the, I don't think we got the answers, but at least getting the questions is a very good use of a day's time. In terms of the, I think it was very important, a lot of conversations about one size fits all and the degree, the tension between approaches which are um, that there is a dynamic tension which people, which people are finding it quite difficult to navigate between keeping costs, including the sort of process cost of these technologies down, which would tend to lead towards more sort of one-size-fits-all, fairly robust, fairly simple things, um, and which is also necessary because of the number of different actors. So on the one side there's a desire for sort of homogenization, but on the other side there's the fact that each context is very different, and if it's communicating with disaster-affected communities, each community is very different. And because what we're really talking about when we talk about communication, as Jim Miller said, is we're talking about power. Um, one size will not fit all if you actually want to do that communication effectively because communication is a social activity. So it's this tension between getting the simplest, most generic approach and getting something which is boutique and specialised for any individual context. I think that's very difficult. But um, it's a good example of, I think, the question has been has kind of come to the surface. I think the most important question is, what next? Um, there were many, many que how-to questions. Um, how to deal with the, that, the tension that we were talking about, I was talking about a second ago. Um, but I think really the big issue is, how, at what point do you move from isolated and very successful individual activities? Do you, first of all, move from isolated successful individual activities to something that is more systemic? Um, and if so, when's that going to happen? We're not operational. We are also a network. We're a learning network, um, which is interested in systemic the performance of the system and of our members in terms of the quality of humanitarian aid and also in terms of the degree to which accountability works forward accountability towards affected populations but also other forms of accountability as well so we won't be putting things into practice in the field i think what next for us is that we watch and look for ways that we can support these conversations support learning from these conversations going forward but that's actually something that the CDAC network itself is very well, you know, is optimised to do. So I think probably the ALNAP role there is to, um, to continue to support through our, our role in the steering committee.